Okay, so we are, I'm Fiona, the Editor-in-Chief of Jumpkit, and I'm here with Holly Weaver, and we're here to talk about Loki. So hopefully you'll have seen the finale by now before you listen to this little jump chat. Um, and we're here to talk about what we liked about the show, if there was anything we thought they maybe could have done differently. And also about the exciting news that there's going to be a season two and what we think might be going on there. So um, what I think we both overall pretty much love the show. I think I'm right in saying so. What mm-hmm. did we love about it? Oh, God, like, what, what didn't I love about it? Like, it's quite <laughs> funny because it wasn't it wasn't on my like, most anticipated uh, list, like from Marvel TV series. And I kind of took me maybe the first episode to really get into it but by the end of the second episode when um when Sylvie turned up I was completely hooked um I just loved the I just love the whole I love the story I love the character dynamics like the like relationship between Loki and Sylvie like their all their sort of banter to begin with and then as that developed love that the, just the cast in general was great um not just um, you know, with Tom Hiddleston and Sophia De Martino, but like also like Wumi Masaku and Gugu and Bath Raw and Owen Wilson. Like it's just it's just a great cast. Um, and yeah, it was just it was so exciting. Like I've, I've I've seen a lot of people compare it to Doctor Who, in that sense of like yeah. sort of sci-fi meets um, fantasy mix, and like you kind of have like you know these. You know, the main two, kind of like the Doctor and the Companion, I guess, in a way, going on adventures and stuff. And it was just, yeah, so exciting. It was really nice coming off the back of, because um, the Falcon and Winter Soldier, it was fun. It was fine. I, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't, I didn't find it amazingly exciting. So it was nice to have something so different coming off the back of that. And I think that, yeah, yeah I think that definitely helped it. So what, mm, what about you? Yeah, I agree that. If- Falcon and the Winter Soldier wasn't the strongest. Mm-hmm. Um, I was really, really excited for Loki, so I had, I was really hyped for it. I think he's a character who's always deserved a lot more attention with it within the MCU. Like I always felt like, you know, they could have gone into a lot more depth with him and really expanded what he got to do because I think Tom Hiddleston is absolutely brilliant as Loki. I think he's like the strongest actor within the MCU in terms of portraying that character because I think he has brought so many layers to it. Obviously, the fact that you never know whether he's lying and if you can trust him. But then there's also all of, you know, the funny kind of sibling rivalry with Thor um, and there's a lot going on with him. Um, I really loved it, loved the TV series from the first episode. I didn't know what to expect because I hadn't seen any trailers, so I didn't even know what it was going to look like. I didn't know anything about it. And I was really, really bowled over by the TVA. I think the TVA is probably my favourite thing about the whole show in terms of like its design, aesthetic. I just really, really loved it. Um, and I agree with you about the cast as well. Owen Wilson, um, his scenes with both Tom Hiddleston and Gugu Mbatha Raw, um, I thought were brilliant. You know, I really love their their dynamics. Um, so yeah, I, I I really loved it overall. Um, I think it has just pipped uh, one division for me mm-hmm. in terms of like favorite of the MCU shows because I was I kept being worried. I knew it was only six episodes. I kept thinking, is it going to stick the landing? You know, what is the ending going to be like? And so that was my main worry. But I did think the ending was was pretty strong. Um, so yeah, I think I think quality wise, it maintained over the six episodes. I think it is my favorite. Favorite. absolutely same I think it, it did get for me it got better and better like every episode I think my fav my standouts were I'm probably I'm, I'm I feel like I'm in the minority with this but episode three Lamentus I know a lot of people be like oh it's yeah. a filler episode it wasn't very good it was boring nothing happened I actually I love that episode I went back and watched it like a few days after I'd originally seen it which is so weird for me because I never go back and rewatch tv shows or episodes so close after I've seen it for the first time but it was just so much fun. I could watch like Loki and Sylvie and their back and forth. I could watch that for hours and hours because it was it was just so great. And it was so funny. 
Um, so for me, that was a massive highlight. And then the finale I thought was fantastic as well. I was like on the edge of my seat the entire time. It was just like one thing after another. And with the reveal with Kang the Conqueror, that I was not expecting that. That completely, for me, came out of nowhere. And I kind of had to pause it and just like take a, <laughs> take a minute because I was just like, is that who I think it is? And yeah, it's just, oh, that his introduction was just brilliant. And I feel like within yeah. within five, ten minutes, Jonathan Majors just completely stole the show. I would just, he was so, it's just like his sort of, uh, characterization of Kang was just so mesmerizing like immediately I just was, immediately I was just like I want I want more I want to see more of him and like I can't wait till you know next season so yeah so we are in in uh, in like opposition in terms of like our favorite episodes because three and six were the weakest <gasps> for me. Oh, <laughs> so <no>. um, I know <laughs> um it was for similar reasons really which is that they were just quite talky and quite exposition especially like the finale was just I felt like it was a lot of exposition just so much talking so much information and I found it quite um like I did kind of tune out to to a lot of it like I found it hard to kind of um sustain my attention and interest um I didn't like episode three very much which I know you strongly disagree (laughs) with I just um it it was a, I really missed the TVA and mm-hmm. I really missed Owen Wilson, um and the fact that it was just kind of on this purple planet I felt like you know design wise after it had been so strong to me that wasn't as exciting or interesting to watch and again it felt quite talky like, <laughs> talk, talk, talk all episode, um so the first two episodes and then um four and five were my favorites I loved five five mm-hmm. was the one with uh, Richard E. Grant oh, and amazing. Alligator Loki and everything I thought that one was brilliant like there was so much going on there was like so many different characters I thought that one was really really good um, and again, you know, it wasn't set in the TVA, but I, but that one worked a lot better for me. Just in t- and I and I really liked the way like the planet was kind of crumbling around them. It had like that sort of junkyard kind of feel to it, where there were all different areas that they went to. And to me, that was a lot more kind of visually interesting than Lamentus. Mm-hmm. Um, episode six, yeah, I wasn't expecting Johnson Majors at all, so that did completely take me by surprise as well. Um, he's such a good actor. Mm-hmm. So although, like I say, I did tune out a little bit, <laughs> a little bit to what they were saying, his performance was very compelling. He's always really charismatic. He's really like commands, you know, commands the screen. He's very, very good. Um, you know, he's a very good actor and a very good talker. So yeah, that was good. To me, um, the finale felt more like a kind of mid-season finale so my theory is and I've this has been kind of backed up by some of the things the writers and things have been saying is that I think it was quite badly affected by Covid mm. um Falcon and the Winter Soldier was as well um I don't think this was originally supposed to be six episodes I think it was meant to be longer oh okay so um they and yeah the writers like tweeted something yesterday where he was like oh we did originally plan to have like a lot more between Owen Wilson and Guggen M- Mabatha Raw and then he said because of Covid like they've had to cut out a lot of things oh, no. so yeah the finale to me felt more like a kind of mid-season finale and I think it was always intended to be longer which is why we're getting a season two so right. season two might be another six episodes, but I think really they it's like it's one long season, if you know what I mean. Oh, uh, OK, yeah. That's my theory anyway. Yeah, so I saw a lot of people saying, oh, the finale was a lot of set up and not much payoff. But then I, I understand that, that being a problem if they were only planning on doing the one series. But I think it's that's made better by the fact that there is a second series. All it's done is end on a cliffhanger. You know, TV shows do that yeah. all the time. So... I don't think, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry if people see it like that. I personally didn't see it like that. Like, I thought uh, that a lot a lot was answered, but then a lot was also set up for the next season. And not just for the next season, but for the rest of the MCU as well. Like, the implication, yeah. the implications from the last, so, the last five minutes of that episode. Uh, it's just mind-boggling, it really is. It is. Um... I think the other thing some people were saying is like the sort of character art for Loki and the fact that he did grow quite a lot during 
the season in terms of like his self awareness. Obviously, he he was like you know coming to terms with a lot of things about himself, which I really loved. And I do love. I although S- Sylvia wasn't my favorite character, I did like the fact that he was kind of falling for her because I think it's the most low key mm-hmm. move of all time <laughs> to be attracted to him, a version of himself. Yeah, absolutely, I thought that was hilarious and well done. Um, and his sort of journey of self discovery, I thought was you know really really good. And then I think some people were a bit let down by the finale in terms of like, well, he's just kind of on his own again and kind of lost and in a different timeline or wherever he's kind of ended up. And it bit a bit like that kind of gross had been for nothing. But obviously we can see what happens in season two. That's the thing, the, the slight frustration with things like, and, you know, I get a bit annoyed by this and I know... Um, Nick Deal famously does as well on the Junkrat <laughs> team. When things involve timelines and time travel and multiverses, then it feels a bit like nothing has any kind of consequences and nothing's lasting. So if a character dies, they immediately pop up somewhere else. Like, And we did see a bit of that in Loki. Like, you know, people like Owen Wilson getting purged and then popping up somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Loki getting purged and popping up somewhere else. So you feel a bit like you can't really trust anything you're seeing or really invest in things you're seeing because if something bad happens to someone, you're always like, oh, they'll probably be fine and they'll probably pop up again in another episode kind of thing. Right, yeah, yeah, I get, yeah, I get that. That's fair enough. Um, I think that's... Um, one reason why it's good that a lot of things that, for example, happen in Endgame and deaths that happen in Endgame now, I hope, are final and we've cut the cord and that's done and then we'll just carry on. I mean, obviously, I feel like something like Black Widow, the film kind of, it doesn't undo Natasha dying, but then it's kind of like the fact that we're revisiting it two years after she's supposed to have been dead. It's kind of like, OK, well, we've kind of moved on now. <laughs> so I'm going off topic a bit yeah. talking about Black Widow, but... Um, but no, I guess, yeah, we've just all got to go into the rest of the phase four with an open mind, really, and see what happens and see which films it's going to, the multiverse is going to impact. Obviously, um, a lot of people think that uh, the next Spider-Man film, um, no, is it no, Way, no Way Home? Or have I made that up? I think yeah. so, yeah. That one's going to have so much going on in terms of multiverses, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And you know, different versions of the same character and all of that kind of thing. <laughs> it's go- it's going to make my head and Nick's head explode, I think. And then we've got Doctor <laughs> Strange, one. and that's probably going to make <laughs> make you go even yeah. more crazy. Definitely. I mean, I'm, you know, it, I'm a little bit, not worried, but, you know, I'm a bit like, mm, about it all. But also, you know, I am excited for things to continue because I loved, you know, we all loved Florence Pugh, for example, mm-hmm. Um, you know, we want to see how she's going to be involved in in various things. So, you know, I am excited and I would definitely want to see more of Loki. So the fact that, <laughs> again, he's another character who got killed and mm-hmm. then we're now, now <laughs> like revisiting and got a whole, you know, storyline with him that we're starting to care about. So basically nothing matters. <laughs> we just got to enjoy it. I think. <laughs> yeah, you just got to kind of go with it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was so Loki was just so well designed and well directed that I I really hope we see more of that. That's what I loved about Wonder Vision as mm-hmm. well. Is obviously the production design and costume design elements were so strong and really thought out, and that's what I'd love to see more of. And you know, Falcon and the Winter Soldier felt a little bit bland in comparison, and just a lot more kind of typical what we've already seen. Whereas both WandaVision and Loki had really sort of distinctive styles and <clears throat> yeah, I hope we, we see more of that. Yeah, because I think um, the problem with things... That thing, was definitely my favourite thing. Yeah, I think the... I mean, a lot of people do like the sort of more street level Marvel stuff. So like Cats in America, um, The Winter Soldier. So that's very... Yeah. it's you No, know, it's, it's not the mystical, fantastical side of Marvel. It's more the grounded, more realist yeah. side of marvel which i mean completely get people really really into but and don't get me wrong winter short soldier is a great a great film technically but it's personally for me like i i'm way more entertained and way more uh gripped when it's like more mystical type things dealing with like the supernatural um in the way that loki did with all the like 
well, with all their mischief and all the enchant like the enchantments that you know Sylvie did, and then Loki yeah. sort of learned to do, um, and the sort of like far off worlds and planets that we've never seen before. That's yeah. really that's something I I absolutely love about Marvel. That's what keeps me sort of coming back. So I think that's why I loved it so much. <laughs> and it's it, I have to admit, like yeah. I love I love Wonder Vision. I would say uh, Loki was absolutely my favorite favorite MCU TV show so far. But Wonder Vision is a close second because that was fantastic as well. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I was absolutely loving One Division up until the last two episodes, where that's why I was a bit wor- worried with Loki. I was like, you know, <laughs> please, mm-hmm. please don't go hugely off the rails at the end, please don't. But you know, I'm I'm really pleased to say that Loki did sustain the quality, and you know, it didn't completely. Although, you know, obviously it always was likely that it was going to set up something, you know, another character or another thing, aspect of the MCU. You know, we knew that was probably always going to happen. It didn't feel really shoehorned and it didn't feel like, oh, we're just having to stick this random character in here or we're just having to, you know, force in this whole, you know, this aspect of the MCU just for the sake of it kind of thing. It felt in keeping and Jonathan Majors felt part of that world. I think, you know, like I say, because he's so good, he slotted in really well and seemed to really get the tone. And, you know, if he hadn't been so strong, I think, you know, it would have been very different. But yeah, it it, it was a good finale. It was good. And yeah, I, I can't wait for season two. I wonder how long we have to wait. Yeah, because I think I, I heard a rumour that it potentially will start filming like January next year. I think that that's only rumour, though. I have no idea what's going to happen. So, but I, I can imagine we won't see season two for it, for at least a year, eight, maybe eighteen months. So, um, but what's your what's what would be your one big hope for season two? If anything could happen, what would you want to happen? I think. Everyone's going to hope that Sylvie comes back into it and yeah. that Loki ends up with her <laughs> somehow. And I, I do get that because, you know, I'm a romantic at heart and I, you know, anything, any kind of <laughs> sign or hope for romance with a character, I'm always going to sort of encourage that and be on board. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I just, I would like, to, you know, st- for the TVA to still be a part of it. I would like... Owen Wilson and Gugu and Winmi Masaki, who's so good as well. I'd like all of them to be involved somehow. Um, <laughs> like I say, I mean, they all potentially could be because, you know, people come back and, you know, the very last scene was in the TVA, a version of the TVA, and they kind of all were there. So hopefully they'll all still be involved and it will it will have a similar kind of tone and look to the first, the first season. That's what I would hope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think my going back to your your very first point for me, as long as Sylvie is in it in a big way, I absolutely love her. Anybody that follows me on Twitter has probably seen me talk about every single episode how much I love Sylvie. So I really like <laughs> and like that's she's only been like she was only in like four you know pretty much four episodes. Yeah. So I think that's a real testament to um, Sophia Di Martino and like how. Mid- Midlands represent. I know, I was say that. I was so happy when I found out she's in Nottingham. I was like, oh, Midlands, here we go. And it's so nice hearing a different accent. Like... As soon as she started talking, I was like, wow, she really sounds like she's from the Midlands. Like, she just sound, sounded so familiar to me. Yeah. And to me, it's like, it's, it is exciting to hear somebody who sounds so much like me in an MCU show. Mm-hmm. And then we also got um, Erin Kellyman in, in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. She's from Tamworth. Yeah. So I just love hearing those Midlands accents. I'm like, yay, in the MCU. It's great. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> nice to hear non sort of London, non RP uh, yeah. sort of accents. It's great. <laughs> because because you can really hear the difference between her and Tom Hiddleston. Mm-hmm. That's what I like. And like, she's not from the north. You know, she's not. I don't know, you know, how much Americans pick up on this, but like her accent is very, very different to Tom Hiddleston's. Mm -hmm. And to me, you know, it's exciting to hear that. And like, and, you know, to hear a a Midlands accent is quite rare. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, normally it's either like RP or like maybe Cockney or Northern, you know, we don't hear Midlands accents that much. Yeah. Yeah, so that was as soon. Yeah, I, <laughs> I think it was. Yeah, it was in the third episode. As soon as I heard her talk, I was like, "Bet you she's." I, and I said specifically East Midlands as well. So I was like, "Bet you she's from the East Midlands." So I was on like Wikipedia trying to find out. <laughs> that was great. But yeah, I just I loved. Her. I thought she was uh, she was just brilliant. 
So um, I, yeah, yeah, and so I'm now doing the thing where I'm going back and watching like anything else that she's <laughs> she's been in, <laughs> which I feel like a lot of people are now doing with Aww. Tom Hiddleston. A lot of people are going back through his filmography. Yes, I, yeah, I've I've got like two friends who are doing like Tom Hiddleston deep dives at the moment, which is funny because I've already already been through all of that. Yeah, I'm hoping it will get more people to watch Crimson Peak because Crimson Peak is a great film. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a very good point yeah that's definitely one of my favorites of mm-hmm. his um yeah he was so good so during uh during loki and and i'm just so thankful that we've had that time with him mm-hmm. because he's such a good character and he is so good as that character that i'm just grateful we've had those uh, extra six hours and then whatever whatever else we get for him to explore that character because He's very, very good at it. It was the same with WandaVision as well. It was so nice to see these characters whose personalities and like psyches we haven't had much as much chance to to explore as maybe the the bigger characters like with with Wanda and with Vision. I feel like those two in particular in the films you didn't really get to know them very well because no. they were lost amongst you know a massive ensemble cast. Um, and yeah, it's the same with uh, Loki as well. Um, and you can. And it's really nice. You can tell that Tom Hiddleston's having so much fun with this character, even though he's played him for so long. It's it's a similar yeah. thing to like Thor Ragnarok. Like it's that kind of that playfulness um, and the kind of more jokey side. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's just yeah, been brilliant all the way through. Loved it. I can't wait to rewatch. I'll probably I will probably be watching rewatching it in about a month's time. So, so the whole series. <laughs> Yeah, I can definitely see myself rewatching Loki, especially with it only being the six episodes. It's going to be very easy to rewatch a few times. Absolutely. Right, I think we have, uh, have reached the end of our time, but um, thank you for chatting with me, Holly. And obviously, we hope that uh, if you're listening to this, that uh, you enjoyed Loki as much as we did. But uh once the episode comes out then feel feel free to comment and (laughs) and disagree with this if you if you uh want to okay so thank you thank you bye and goodbye bye